probably was still a little confused, but this looks good. So if this is your enzyme, and we want the enzyme substrate complex, it's when the enzyme and the substrate come together. C. So enzyme substrate, enzyme substrate complex. What's another word for substrate or what's reacting or what we're starting with? What do we just see in the graph? Reactants, right? So you could say substrate or reactants. But this is your starting piece. Okay. Where is the active site? Water and oxygen. Okay. Is water dangerous? No. Is oxygen dangerous? 
No, we take this dangerous subject, this dangerous substrate, and it's broken into completely not dangerous products. We can really train, change molecules around. So, uh, in addition to being in our body cells, it's also in potato cells. Catalase is in potato cells. The enzyme is in potato cells. I'm going to take hydrogen peroxide and put it in our mashed up potato cells. What should form if the enzyme is working? Water and oxygen. How can we see water and oxygen? What will they produce together? You see when you boil water. Steam, and what's the oxygen forming in the water? Bubbles. 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 So if this enzyme's working, we're going to see bubbles. If it's not working, we're not going to see the oxygen and water forming. We won't see bubbles, okay? So I have this guy right here. It's at normal room temperature. I'm going to use my 3%, the one you put on your cuts, hydrogen peroxide. And we'll see what happens. I'm also going to put the other potatoes in that hot water bath back behind Jackson. Um, and we're going to see if the same thing happens when we put the potato in heat, when we put temperature or add hot temperature to our enzyme. Does it stay the same shape or does it shape change? And in order to um, put this in the hot water bath, I have to add a little bit of water to it just so it doesn't like burn. Um, and while we wait three minutes for this in the hot water bath, I'm going to play a song that I would say is probably the best song ever created. Um, it's all about enzymes. And it will really help you remember what they do. So a little like um, preview. It's going to say a lot of words with the ace in it, like catalase, um, helicase. We don't know what everything is, but they're all enzymes if you see an ace. It's going to talk about amino acids, which are the monomers of proteins, and enzymes are proteins. And it's going to talk about what enzymes do. So take a look at this. If you choose to sing along, I don't blame you. It's really hard not to. Um, so you can't. But I'll put this in the hot water bath.
shape, shape slightly to accommodate the substrate. Here the case, here the case. DNA polymerase. Fun, 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 fun. Make it a substrate complex. What do they do? Enzymes. So enzymes. Got a what reaction?
good guess, good guess. So it's actually a little bit different. They, you're, you're right though. Um, our body doesn't want our enzymes to become dysfunctional. If our body temperature gets too high, if you have an 105 fever, you go to the doctors because our enzymes are denatured, like Derek said. So he's completely right. If it gets too high, it's dangerous. Our enzymes are denatured. However, if it's only a couple degrees, a fever is actually good for you. And here's why. The bacteria and the virus that cause a fever, they need iron to live. When your temperature raises, your liver takes all the iron out of your blood, out of your body, and into the liver so that the bacteria and viruses can't get to it. And then they die. They don't have any food. So that's why your body is, it's good that it raises temperature. So it's, it's protecting you. So Unless it gets too hot, you need your enzymes. Yes. So your liver literally just starves the virus. Yes, all exactly. All yeah, how cool is that? Our body works well. Lucy? Okay. I, I was going to say, I thought that there was a reason for that. To kill, yes, and that's how with the iron. So most people can sometimes think of that part, right? That it does kill them somehow. How takes their food away? Takes it all. Okay. Um, also, again, pH, how acidic or basic an environment is. Um, all enzymes in our body need to be at the same temperature, but not the same pH. Our stomach's really acidic, so certain enzymes are there breaking down proteins. Certain enzymes are in our mouth, our saliva, breaking down the food right when it comes into our body but these have more of a neutral pH that they like to be in. If you took an enzyme from our stomach and put it in our mouth, the pH is going to make it so that it's not effective. So it does matter on their environment for these proteins to work. Okay. All that. So some more about catalysts. Here's another whiteboard question. This reaction we just looked at, right on your whiteboard, is it C, catabolism, or A, anabolism? Is it breaking down or building up? Which one? Ooh. Which vocab word? Let's go with that. I got this. <clears throat> C or A. Okay, so we have um, hydrogen peroxide and we break it down into water and oxygen, breaking down. What's on the ground? What do we see on the ground? What animal? A cat. A cat. So breaking down is catabolism. This is catabolism. When we break something down, does it release energy or take it in? Release, right? Back to our bark example again. If we um, are breaking something down, when we break those bonds, energy is released. Released, okay? Um, heat is a form of energy. So if we have a catabolic reaction, we should feel heat. So I'm going to do this exact reaction we just did with the potatoes again in a different way, and we should feel heat, okay? Um, so this time I'm going to use the dangerous hydrogen peroxide, the one that burns our skin, okay? Does anyone want to come up here and touch this to see if it feels heated after I do this experiment? Hey! Okay, everyone has <laughs> their hands up. You all come up at the end, okay? So all you guys have your hands up. You come up. Um, so, I just said this burns your skin, and they all just volunteered to come touch it. Yeah. Why? Uh, curiosity told me. Yeah. Curiosity. Yeah. curiosity. Yeah. Why else? If I'm going to put this in a reaction, what's it going to turn into by the end? Oh, it's going to turn into water and oxygen. Yeah, it's going to turn into water and oxygen. Is that going to hurt them? No. No, I wouldn't let them burn themselves. That's perfect. Um, I would still do it. You would still do it? Okay, so I'm going to make elephant's toothpaste up here. I have catalase again. Um, if you want to come and stay on the sides of the desk, you can, or you can stay seated, that's fine. But if you want to come stand on the sides so people who are seated can see, you're welcome to on the sides. <laughs> um, so, um, I'll talk it through as I go, I'll try and hold it up as well. But, I take our hydrogen peroxide. What enzyme breaks down hydrogen peroxide? <laughs> Oh, it's that one. Catalase. Catalase. It's in potatoes. Yeah, it's called catalase. That's our enzyme. Doesn't look painful. Doesn't look painful. It doesn't look painful. It's like water. It's like sparkling water. Okay, and if this catalase breaks down this hydrogen peroxide, what is it going to um, make? Again? Uh, oxygen. <laughs> oxygen and water. How are we going to see the oxygen? What did we see with the potato? Bubbles. bubbles. Okay. Soap is not part of the reaction, but it's going to make the bubbles bigger. So I'm going to add it just. Is it? Okay. 
let's see. Jackie, what color should we do? Red, blue, or green? Blue. Blue. This is not going to act either. It's just for making it pretty. Okay. Okay. Blue, blue color. So I mix it up. Okay. So I have my hydrogen peroxide. I need my enzyme. Where are we going to find that? It's in our body cells, it's in potato cells, it's in yeast. So we're going to take this yeast. Like we're making bread. Yeast. Okay. You will. So I'm going to mix the yeast with water. It's its own little organism. I drink that. How old is it that could count that? Give me a hundred, I'll drink it. Well, we need a permit. Actually, we can't drink it. Okay. So, um, if this is going to react, if the catalase in here breaks our hydrogen peroxide down, we should see bubbles. Okay. Um, and we should feel what to release heat. Okay. Catalase because they really do release energy. They really do release. Heat. It's a bath bomb. It's a bath bomb. Think of a. Think of a. And there's Alice. Oh, you guys can touch it real quick. Oh, that's Alice. Get him away. Okay, it's like a volcano. Is it warm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Not even. No. No. That's a shame. I didn't try it. Okay. Is it warm? Yeah. 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 Y
but we know hydrogen peroxide will do what if it's really strong? Burn. Burn. So you can't put this in your eye. How are we going to make sure before your contact lens goes into your eye that the hydrogen peroxide's gone? Water. We want to turn it into water and oxygen. How? So what do we need to break it down? Catalase. So you're going to put it in a solution if catalase before you put it back in your eye. It'll break down, it has cleaned off your contact lenses, and it's nice and safe for you. So enzymes have a lot of roles. Here's another one. This beetle in South Africa has hydrogen peroxide in one of its chambers. It has catalase in one of its chambers. And when it gets scared, it combines these chambers. And the catalase breaks the hydrogen peroxide down and mixes with this other toxic chemical in its body. And boom, it sprays its predator with all of this corrosive hot liquid. Oxygen from the um, catalase and hydrogen peroxide reaction is what causes that force of gas to just spray out. So catalase enzymes, they're everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Here's some more in our daily lives. Raise your hand if you like jello. Okay, I, I don't want to ruin this for you, and I hope we won't, but um, jello is made from gelatin. It's a protein that we get from boiling the skin and bones of animals, okay? Yeah. It is. Wow. It is. It is. Yeah. Yes, anything with that, yeah, the gummy kind of So you're getting protein. So you're boiling it, so it's cleaning. Well, you're getting the protein from gel. Not a significant source. It makes the sugars. It's not a good But, anyways, gelatin is a protein, okay? Um, check this out. Um, so here's our steps we heat gelatin in hot water. Then, as the gelatin mixture cools, we have these protein strands that form together. They form bonds. Um, and they trap air that makes this jello or gel like structure. If you read step six of how to make jello, it says don't put kiwi, papaya, or pineapple in here. Okay. If you do, here's what happens. And I'll show you this tomorrow. I forgot my samples um, at home. So I'll bring them in. Here's your jello without pineapple. It's nice and solidified. Here is your jello with pineapple. It's still soupy. It didn't form jello. What might be in pineapple that breaks down our protein gelatin? Manuel? Yes, so catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So it won't be specifically catalase, but another? Another enzyme. Yes, so specifically in pineapple, we have bromelain. It breaks down proteins, and gelatin is a protein. So you can put pineapple, papaya, all of that in jello. They'll break it down. Has anyone seen pineapple in jello? No. No. Okay. You no. might have. Here's why. You can put canned jello, um, canned pineapple into jello. What did we do to the potato to make it so we could still have the catalase there, but it didn't work? Added water, and then where did we put it? The one that didn't bubble. Heat. So what do you think they do to canned pineapple to make it so the bromelain doesn't work? They heat the pineapple before canning it and denature the enzyme. Yeah. Okay, so again, enzyme breaking down um, a substrate. Yes. Why did the pineapple thing do it? Like put the pineapple in and then they do the gel? What if yes. you put the pineapple after the gel? That's okay. You can. You can put the pineapple in after, like as a topping. That would be okay. Yeah. It might break down the top a little bit, but it will form first. No, I want to see if it would like just keep sinking down. Oh. So you put it on meat before you cook it. Any guesses as to what meat tenderizer also has inside of it? Enzymes. And they break down the protein in meat. Why? Well, meat's really tough substance. It's hard to cook. It's hard to chew unless we kind of break it down a little bit. So the enzyme of meat tenderizer will break that protein down a little bit so that it's easier to eat. Enzymes are everywhere. And what macromolecule do we fall under? They do fall under proteins. So enzymes are an example of proteins, but they're a big example, so we focus on them quite a bit. Okay? Um, so, I um, want you guys to.
to don't to not forget about the worksheet. It's a little review on enzymes. Again, just the front side. Um, and you can pack up your whiteboards now um, before we can pack. I wanted to do flickers today, but we'll start class with a 